Hi, this is Simon. I'm back with our synthesizer from part four. I'm gonna dig into this and add some LFOs. I'm gonna add LFOs to do three different effects. I'm gonna have an LFO that does a vibrato, an LFO that does a tremolo, and an LFO that will do an auto wah for me, a wah wah effect. Now, just to be clear on our terms, vibrato is an LFO modulation of pitch, of frequency. Tremolo is an LFO modulation of amplitude. And the Ottawa is a modulation of timbre. Specifically, it's going to be the cutoff frequency of a filter moving up and down with an LFO. Let's start by doing the vibrato, which is going to be the easiest, just because it has the easiest math. You'll notice I'm not doing my split screen with the panel and this structure up at the same time, because we're just running out of space on the screen. In order to look at my structure here, I'm going to click on New here. And now we'll start with this vibrato. We know I have my note pitch coming in here, and we know that if we add an LFO, an LFO is going to go from negative one up to one. And so if we just take our note pitch, the pitch that we're playing on the keyboard, and add that varying signal that's going from negative one up to one and back down again, we can get a nice vibrato. Probably if it's going from negative one to one, that will be too wide, but we'll add some controls to make it a little bit more subtle. To keep things nice and clean as always, let's put this LFO inside of a macro. New macro. We'll name it vibrato. Now let's look inside. So let's go built in module, terminal, out. And now let's add our built in module, LFO envelope, LFO. All right. We can choose the waveform coming out. If we wanted to, we could probably set up a switch that would let us choose which of these waveforms we want. Sine wave, triangle wave, or pulse wave. For today, I'm just gonna use the triangle wave, but I encourage you to experiment. Again, add a switch and you can add buttons that you could change with. We've got a frequency, an amplitude, a W for a pulse width. Since we're not doing pulse wave, that's gonna not do anything. This sync receives a trigger. When it receives that trigger, it starts the LFO over. That could be useful. And then we have a phase here. Let's focus first on creating controls for the frequency and the amplitude, but I'd like to rename these rate and depth. Now, both of these are correct, but since it's an LFO, renaming it to rate can help us to understand that this is not an audio signal, it's a sub audio signal. For now, let's leave that there and go back to the ensemble level. All we need to do with this vibrato now is add it. Built-in module, math, add. And all we need to do is add it to the note pitch that's coming in. Let's wire this up to all of the P's. And let's go back to our panel. So here's my vibrato. Let's play a note. Okay, that could be a neat effect, but let's uh, play with these controls and see if we can get a more natural sounding vibrato. Let's bring up this rate. Generally in Western music, I believe vibrato tends to be about four hertz to eight hertz. But still we've got an outer space sound because that depth is so high. Let's bring it down. And that's a pretty good vibrato. So let's think about this. Our depth is set at 0 0.29. So this is the amplitude of the LFO. So that LFO doesn't go from negative one to one. It goes from negative 0.29 to 0.29. So if we think about what's going on, we're taking that note pitch and then adding in a signal that's constantly going up and down from negative 0.29 to 0.29. And so if I'm playing note number 60, it's gonna go from, what, uh, 59.71 up to 60.29, and then back and forth and back and forth. Less than a note, right? It would have to go to 61 to be a note away. And so we get this vibrato effect. If I turn this up higher, the LFO goes further. All 
right, as I said, vibrato was our easiest because it has the easiest math. Tremolo gets a little bit more challenging because we already have something that is modulating the amplitude. We need to find a way to modulate the amplitude with both the LFO and the ADSR. Let's start by duplicating our macro here. And let's rename this now Tremolo. So again, we have a signal in here coming out of the LFO that goes from negative one to one. When we want to scale these sets of numbers, we always are going to multiply and then add. Multiply and then add. We did this in the last video with our envelope filter. We took in the zero to one of the envelope filter, we multiplied it by a knob that we were adjusting, and then added it to the note pitch of what we were playing. This time we're going to take this negative one to one, and let's try to turn this negative one to one into a signal that could effectively change amplitude. Now, we know that our oscillators, for their A's, they want zero to one, not negative one to one. So I need to think about the math I need to do to change negative one to one into zero to one. I won't do this out by hand, but here's my thinking. Zero to one has a range of one. Negative one to one has a range of two. So the first thing that I need to do is do some multiplication. To multiply something that has a range of two to get a range of one, I need to multiply it, create constant, by 0 0.5. So if I multiply a range of 2 by 0 0.5, I get a range of 1. Built-in module, math, add. So negative 1 to 1 comes out of here. Once I've multiplied that by 0 0.5, what's coming out of here is going to be negative 0 0.5, the lowest number, negative 1 times 0 0.5 is negative 0 0.5, times the highest number. 1 times 0.5 is 0.5. So I have a range of negative 0.5 to 0.5. Again, what I want is 0 to 1, so that means I need to add, create constant, 0 0.5. Let's follow this math. Lowest value, negative 1, times 0.5 is negative 0.5, plus 0.5, gives me zero. So my lowest value is now zero, not negative one. Highest value, one times 0 0.5. 0 0.5 comes out of this, plus 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is one. And so I now have a range of zero to one. So now with this tremolo, I don't want to add it to this ADSR. I want to instead multiply it. I'm going to leave the envelope filter out of this for a second. Built-in module, math, multiply. Now the reason for this is, this is 0 to 1, and this is 0 to 1. If I add 0 to 1 plus 0 to 1, I get 0 to 2. And then I don't want 2 going into all of these. But if I multiply these, I have 0 to 1 times 0 to 1. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is zero, but one times one is one. Back to my panel. I want to isolate this tremolo. So what I'm going to do to get the vibrato out of the way is turn the depth to zero. So that means the amplitude of that LFO is zero, which means basically it's off. Let me do that with the tremolo too. So we should have no vibrato, no tremolo. Here's our vibrato. Okay, and now here's our tremolo. Now we can use vibrato and tremolo at the same time. We could set the rate to be the same, but if we set the rates to be different, Now with them different, the vibrato and tremolo are out of phase with each other, and our sound is constantly changing.
So far so good. So now we've added both a vibrato and a tremolo. Let's add that auto wah. I'm just gonna add it to one of my filters, not both of them. And so I'm gonna choose this filter one. So here's that filter one, let's go inside. Actually, I'm gonna go back for a second. I'm gonna take this tremolo, go Command C, go in here and Command V. Let me rename this auto wah. And we know that inside this, it's going from zero to one after I do this math. Let me get rid of these constants because we're gonna replace them and think about what we're gonna do here. So now we want to move this cutoff frequency up and down. Once again, our range is gonna be different, but let's start by adding this in. So what do we want it to do? Maybe we set the cutoff frequency using our panel. Whoops, let's clean this up a bit. There we are. We'll set the cutoff frequency center here. And then we want our auto wah to go up and down, move the cutoff frequency up and down around that cutoff frequency. So let's go back and look at it. Let's start by maybe going create a constant here. Let's do 40. We'll do a little bit of trial and error, but I have a feeling that might actually be a good value. So let's think about what's going on here. Negative one to one, negative 40 to 40. And then what we add that to is the cutoff here. So back to my panel. I'm going to once again, turn off my vibrato and tremolo so we can isolate this. I'm gonna switch this to be my filter, not my envelope filter, because it's only on this filter one. Change our filter fade, and now let's listen. That's not bad. Give it a bit more resonance. So now what's happening is I have the depth set to one. My P cutoff is set at 84. If this is at one, the lowest our LFO goes is negative one negative one times 40 is negative 40. And so negative 40 plus 84 is gonna be 44. Maximum is gonna be one, one times 40, 124. So our filter is sweeping from 44 to 124. If I reduce the depth, it gets closer and closer around that 84. If the depth is zero, no sweeping. I'm doing the low pass filter, but I can do this with a high pass too. I can move that cutoff frequency. And of course, if I bypass, nothing's happening here. There's the notch, it's a little more subtle. And there you go. So just remember, for all of these control signals, we need to think about the control signal that we need. In the case of pitch, the LFO doesn't need to be changed at all. All we do is we add it to the pitch that we're playing, and then we can adjust that with our depth, because that range is already set in a pretty good range. The tremolo needs a little bit of changing. In order to get this LFO that originally goes from negative one to one to go to zero to one instead, we need to do some multiplication and addition. In the same way, we need to do that with our auto wah. We need to do the multiplication to increase its range. Negative one to one is not a lot of space on a filter. It's great for vibrato, but it's not wide enough for a filter sweep. Then we take that and we add it to the knob, to the cutoff knob that we have on our panel already. This is the same idea that we've used in our envelope filter. We're taking in that envelope zero to one, multiplying it by a range that we have on the panel, and then adding it to our note pitch so we can sweep through those harmonics of the notes played. 
Now we can take this all a step further, and I'll probably do that in another video. I'll make a little supplemental video where we can set this auto wah to be synced with the tempo, or we can get this vibrato to have an envelope so it slowly comes in, like a more natural vibrato would. And then also, we can use an LFO to modify pulse width, of course, only affecting our pulse waves. For now, though, we've made all of these changes. We've added this vibrato, tremolo, and auto wah, and none of that information is saved in your presets. So it's good to load up your presets, get the settings that you want, and then restore those sounds. Good luck, and remember, spending time making effective presets is just as important as building the structure. We want to elevate our synths beyond simply a technical exercise to be something that's musically and sonically expressive.